Hey guys, today I'm going to show you what to do with the flute when you get it for the first time. This is for all you newbies out there. We all have to start somewhere. Let's just start with opening the case. I kind of went over this a little bit in my flute review video that I did a while ago. Yamaha. I've had this since I was eight. Yamaha flutes come with sort of a buckle. Lift the lever and then you bring down the little buckly part. Do it to the other side and then you'll open it. That's a Yamaha. Jupiter flutes, you have to be careful, okay? This is the one that I won. Oops, I'm holding it upside down. You have to make sure that the buckly part lifts up. Do you see that? Lift up. If it don't lift up, you be opening upside down. I'm gonna go with mine because I just like this one more. Don't do videos like this, by the way. Ew, there's a hair. Oh, You got three pieces, okay? All flutes come like this. This is the head joint, this is the foot joint, and this is the body. Not too hard to remember, right? Head, body, and foot. You see how all the keys are facing inward? Okay, when you put the flute back in, they gotta be facing inward, okay? Because you want to protect the keys. And also the head joint, you wanna make sure that this lip hole is facing inside, not out. That's actually how the case is built to make it fit. You see these grooves? When you take it out, this is how I do it. I will pick up the body. You can actually stick your finger in to the body, the little neck part here. Stick it in, okay? And then, and then you can grab it here. You don't want to grab it on the keys because you might misalign them. I hold it by the neck here. For the foot joint, I go on this side. And this is the end of the foot joint. This is actually placed so that you can go like, this and then like that and then you just literally you just put it together when you put it together you kind of have to twist it like that don't like jam it in like that the poor flute it's your baby you want this rod part to be in the middle of this key why because it's just more comfortable for your hand if you see someone do it like that either they have really long fingers or they just don't know what they're doing. For people who have really small fingers, like especially if you're like really little, I have kids who are like five. I don't, it's not my child, it's my student, okay? Sometimes they have to twist it up like that so that it's just more comfortable for their finger. I have relatively small fingers, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it like that. This is just a general guideline for when you're starting on the flute, okay? You can adjust it as you see fit for your hand. So now that we've got that, I switch it to the other hand, and I grab it by the neck, like you're strangling it. No, not really. I stick my finger into the lip hole, and then I kind of lift it up. Did you see that? Instant replay. Now you're going to grab it right under the lip hole. You're going to twist it. Twist it. Okay, until it goes in. Now, here comes the part that has to do with pitch. Okay, I'm gonna talk about that on another video. You're just gonna push it all, with, all the way in for now. General rule of thumb, you're going to line up the embouchure hole or lip hole. Embouchure is a really fancy long word, French word, for the way your lips are shaped. Or we also refer to embouchure as just your lips. You want to line it up with keys. Oh, you also see people doing this. People call it like telescope, or I've seen people do this. That's kind of like the more refined telescope. That really sounds wrong. There you go. Now you got your whole fleet together. Bum ba da da. Woo! If you guys want more tips on basic maintenance stuff, I'll do it in another video. But let me just put out a few warnings first. Never have water near your instrument. Do you see these pads inside? See them pads? If those become inundated with water, they will become, you know, how the sponges, when you like wet them and then they dry and then they like shrink and become really brittle. That's basically what's gonna happen to your pads. <clears throat> 
that's what's going to happen to your pads. Um, yeah, they're going to shrink, they're going to become brittle, and they're going to basically just break off your keys. It hasn't happened to me before, but I've had several nightmares of pads falling out of the keys because I dropped it in a puddle of water and I woke up sweating and it was horrible. Another thing is about the water is you want to make sure that it doesn't get into the crown here. This is called a crown because why? It looks like a crown. There's a little cork in there. If you get water in there, it's going to do the same thing that it's going to do to the pads. It's going to shrink and become brittle and it's going to break and it's going to ruin the entire tuning of your entire instrument and it's just it's going to be awful. Repairs for pads and the cork can get expensive. So if you don't want to take your flute to the repair shop that often, don't have water anywhere near your instrument. It's like poison for your baby. You don't want to smash the keys. I mean, you've seen me like holding it like this. I'm actually putting all the weight on this side. The part's actually quite small, so if you rip it and you like strangle it, it's actually going to become strangled and you won't be able to play on it because it'll, yeah, you'll basically have to take it into the repair shop. Everyone's really obsessed with keeping their flutes polished. If your keys are fine, if the inside of your flute is okay, you don't have like dents and stuff like that, it's going to sound exactly the same if your flute is tarnished or not. Before we put it back into the case, maybe I should just teach you where to put your hands. All the keys on this foot joint, these ones close because of these. These are actually extensions of these keys. This whole thing is operated by your pinky. So for right now, your right pinky is just going to be resting right there. Then it's literally ring finger, middle finger, index finger. You put your thumb here. You want it to be as natural of a hand position as possible. You see that? Like that. Left hand. You see these two little keys? Actually, this is an extension of this. You're going to put your little left index finger right there. You're going to skip a key, put your middle finger there, and then the next one is your ring finger and then your pinky on this little lever. These keys here, they're going to be operated by your thumb. For now, you're going to put your thumb on this one. Okay, this one's a cheat key. Do you see how it presses that one down? I have to turn around now. See this part right here? Your index finger is going to be here, right? You're going to rest it right on the meaty part of your finger. You're going to rest the flute right there. You want to nestle the back of the lip plate right into your chin. Then you should feel the lip hole right on the bottom of your lips. You should feel the rim of the flute. That's kind of it. I can do another video on posture if you guys want. Putting the flute back into the case, pop the head joint off, make sure that lip hole faces inward, and pop it back in. Then you grab the neck, and then you grab the very end of the foot joint, and you wiggle it out. Make sure that the keys are facing inward, like that. You know how you can't wash the flute? Well, you have to swab it out because all the spit and condensation and stuff like that. You leave that condensation in that flute, it's going to destroy your pads really quickly. I personally really hate this cleaning rod. It's metal. Never get a metal cleaning rod. It will scratch the inside of your flute like crazy. Go and purchase a wooden one or a plastic one. You can get it at any music store or you can get it from fluteworld.com. No, use this one. This is a wooden one. It's by TJ James. If you don't have one of those like flute cleaning package things that they sell these days. By the way, I'm going to do a review on that. Please do not use everything that they put in there because it's actually really bad for the flute, some of the stuff in there. You're better off using your cleaning rod, a wooden or plastic one, and you're going to use an old handkerchief. I've got this one. I think it's my dad's from the 70s. Nice and soft. You're going to take one corner of it and then you're going to slip it through because it's like a huge needle, right? You're going to stick it through like like so like so okay so it's like that flip it over then you're going to take it and then you're going to twist it like that now this is generally how most flutists do it you're going to take out the flute okay and then you're going to stick it in stick it in this is going to get so many comments about how wrong this is but anyway you're going to twist it to get all of them spit and saliva and condensation. Then you're gonna pull it out. And then you're gonna put it back in. And then you're gonna take out the other piece, like so, okay? And then you're going to stick it all the way through. 
and all the way through. Did you see that? Let's do instant replay. You're going to push it in, you're going to push it in all the way, and then you're going to use your thumb and push it even further in. Mm, this is a lot more wrong than I thought it would be. On the other side, you're going to um, take it out. That's all you really have to do, because it's just a cylindrical object. You're going to do the same thing for the foot joint. You just stick it all the way through and back out. And really, that's all you have to do. You don't really have to polish the food. A lot of stores will give you a polishing cloth that looks like this. Just rub it real lightly. Don't, like, torture your flute, but you're gonna ruin the keywork. Tarnish really doesn't do much to the flute. It won't, like, eat your flute. Rust will eat your flute, so you want to make sure that it ain't rust. A word of caution, never put your polishing cloth and your cleaning cloth into the instrument and then smash it in, like, and just, like, close it, okay? Because you're going to smash the keys. That's going to warp the keys over time. What I did before was I, I got a little bag and I put it in there. What you want to make sure is that you always put your flute away after you're done playing. Things can happen to it and it's actually a pretty fragile instrument. If you sit on it accidentally, don't. Just don't fix it yourself. I will have my flute specialist repair person explain to you what happens to a flute when you try and curve it back after it has your butt print already. Anyway, if you guys know any like photographers and artists out there who are interested in getting flutists to like pose or getting people to pretend to be flutists, make sure they watch this video just so they know where to put the fingers. I cannot tell you how many times I have cringed looking at photos that would otherwise be beautiful portraits where the flutist looks like this. Or this. Or this. Yeah, just tell your photographer friends to watch this video so they make sure that at least their pretend flutist looks like a flutist. Alright, so that's about it. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any comments, just message me, alright? I'll see you guys later. Bye!